Hey guys, I'm back with my fourth video here on my YouTube channel and today I want to talk about how you as an investor avoid emotions in your trading as well as give you five advice on how I perceive uh, the, the sort of way of, in a best possible way, avoid uh, being too emotionally affected and influenced uh, by psychology whenever you are investing. So first of all, as, as you know, uh, I have been investing for approximately five, six years now um, and I'm a small cap um, investor and has been investing into quite a few of these uh, small companies with, with a low market cap and thus also companies that have a, a quite a quite a large volatility in terms of how they are fluctuating on a daily basis. Um, also low volume place that means that the spread between buy and sell is quite huge that also means that um, that the, the stocks are cr uh, quite volatile in terms of uh, daily fluctuations so basically uh, what that means is that as an investor in this space you need to be aware of the daily fluctuations and also be prepared to have days where your portfolio or at least individual stocks in your portfolio are up by 10-15% and the next minute basically being down the same number of percentages. A good example is Altamira Gold uh, where the, the, the sort of the spread between each level so you can buy at 0.17 uh, cent per share uh, and you can sell at uh, 0.20 maybe. That is a huge difference of, of approximately 20-25% between buy and sell. That means that a small purchase of stocks can actually drive the, the, the share price quite uh, quite 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 uh, quite significantly. So basically what I've also experienced over the course of the last five to six years is that you are able to be extremely emotional about investing and that means that not only will poor performance in your portfolio will affect your daily life which is a bad thing because it affects your personality, it affects your surroundings, which is a bad thing, of course. Um, so, so daily negative developments in your portfolio and, and, and sort of periods with, with negative developments in your portfolio will lead to an effect on your daily life and, and your uh, personality and, and your sort of uh, how you're approaching people uh, in, in your everyday life. And that also means that the opposite will happen when things are going quite well, even though the a sort of uh, effect on your uh, on your behavior won't be as big when it's going well that's just psychology we are not as excited when things are going up while we are extremely uh, sad or frustrated when things are going down um, however what I've experienced over the course of the last five or six years or at least in, in the latter couple of years is that you're actually able to avoid these emotions to a certain extent by putting some things in motion in your strategy or your governance, so to say, regarding how you are, um, how you're investing and then sort of your approach to investing uh, by, by sort of implementing small things to your way of approaching investing, you're actually able to uh, significantly um, drive that impact on your behavior and then sort of the emotions taking overhand with, with how your trading is, is, is quite, a, quite a stunning way of, of, of perceiving things. And I think it, it has helped me a lot, not only in terms of, of, of investing, not only impacting my daily behavior to a great extent, but also uh, simply in terms of, of gaining a higher uh, return on, on specific investments because I'm not irrationally uh, trading based on my emotions um, so, so there are some great things to, to, to take away from implementing these things and basically and this will sound so logical and so easy and it's, it's definitely not easy at all uh, but but the sort of the one thing that will make you able to actually distract your emotions from your trading is to put a strategy in motion or at least to create a strategy and a governance around how you perceive investing. So I have five steps 
that I think is quite um, quite important, quite crucial in terms of actually getting to a place and a state in your trading career or your investing career where you won't be as impacted by emotions as you have been in the past. And it, it, is, all, it is all a part of strategy. So it is, it is simply having a strategy in place whenever you're doing an, an investment. However, there are sort of five steps under that umbrella of strategy uh, that is quite critical. The first one is the type of investment. So basically, what is it you're investing in? Not only what, but also why. And I think, so So type of investment is basically, is it a day trade? Is it a swing trade? Uh, is it a long-term hold? Um, is it a compounder? Is it a bottom play? So for instance, we've talked a little bit in, in some of my former videos about RSI 14 and sort of uh, investing in momentum in stocks. Uh, RSI 14 is a, is a technical uh, terminology about uh, the, the last 14 trading days average uh, sort of uh, trend between 0 and 100. And bottom plays is often when you buy a stock that is below 30 on RSI 14 and expect a, a, bound, a rebound uh, in the stock. You could also play a catalyst play and a catalyst play is often if you're expecting, for instance, a company to deliver a strong uh, quarterly report, uh, either if they have, for instance, a biotech or a pharma company, is often they have these um, these catalysts in terms of uh, phase one results, phase two uh, results, or uh, getting approvals from uh, from the health authorities in, in, in either the US or Europe. Um, so that could be a catalyst play. So basically, tell yourself what is it for an investment that you're actually making here, and what is the purpose of the investment. When you have that in place, the second step is to understand the time horizon of your investment. So basically, what is my time horizon on this investment? How long am I gonna hold this specific stock in my portfolio? Um, and again, time horizon varies from person to person. Myself, I could say that I'm a long-term investor in a company and it may only be 12 months, while a long-term investment for uh, my neighbor may be 10 or 12 years. So it varies greatly and, uh, and once again, you need to put some governance in place for whatever time horizon you're investing in. A catalyst play may be a couple of days, it could be a month, it could also be three months. A uh, bottom play is often only a short time uh, period, so that may be a week, a couple of weeks maybe. Uh, and then of course, day trading, that is on a daily basis, swing trading, again varies greatly from person to person. It may be a week, it may be uh, three weeks, it may be three months. Uh, and then long-term holds often again varies based on your time horizon. The third step is putting a price target in place. And I think this is potentially one of the most crucial aspects of avoiding emotion. So basically, greed is, in my, from my perspective, greed is the first and foremost villain of the investment world whatsoever. And I've also talked about Interfox Resources, uh, the current Blue Lake Mineral, and then how I was up 350% on that investment and now I'm down. 90% and I didn't sell a single share in that company and I think that is that is the perfect example of greed and, and why you should always have a price target. What I did back then with Interfuck Resources was that I, in, I increased my price target every time it reached my initial price target and, and I didn't sell any shares. So basically if you have a price target on a specific stock, specific company saying I want to sell at $12 per share and it reaches $12, please sell out and sort of risk manage. And I think it is, of course, what, what you're able to do then is, let's say that, that we are buying at $6 per share, it, it goes to the $12 that is our initial target, a 100% return in a short period of time is amazing. You should every day be happy about that. You're selling at $12 per share, you're selling all of your shares in the company, what I would typically do is that I, I keep a small position just to, to follow the stock afterwards and then maybe increase my overall uh, return afterwards. However, if you're selling all of your shares, a typical emotion you will get if it continues is that, fuck, I should never have sold any of my shares. It, it just keeps going, just keeps going. And that sort of um, sadness and frustration in your body is, is quite normal. However, I think over time and if, if you're sort of 
uh, using this strategy and using this element in your uh, in your own way of, of, of investing, it will sort of develop into not really affecting you that much. And I think even though stocks have increased, a good example is Lemonade. I saw Lemonade at $100 per share, now it's at $130. It's 30% increase in, 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 in my investing uh, investment that I could have gained. And now I've, I didn't gain it because I sold. However, I made a, a 60% return on my initial investment in, in a short period of time and I'm, I'm not really that frustrated about it because I it, it reached my price target and I sold and that's fine and then there will always be another case as we talked about in video 3 there will always be another case there will always be uh, another case that you can invest in and, and often you, you don't have enough capital to even be invested, in, be invested in all of those cases you want to be in so back to the fact that in my, in my opinion, having a price target and always following that price target is, is the best strategy you can, you can give yourself and the best tool in the toolbox to sort of avoid emotions. The fourth element is, is having a stop loss and then back to again video three about cutting your losses and, and letting your winners run. And I think it, it to some extent depends and I think stop losses is, is a tricky tool in the toolbox. Personally, I don't use them physically. So I don't, whenever I'm doing an investment, I'm not putting in a, an, an actual stop loss, so to say. However, I have a mental stop loss. So I have a, I have a price in mind or a percentage decrease from my initial investment that I'm having in mind when it reaches that point, I want to sell. So basically, some people are using 5%, some people are using 10%, some people are using 30%. And again, it varies from person to person. There are no correct answer in, this, in, in, the, in the specific stop loss level uh, you wanna, you wanna set. And, and I think if you're a technical trader, you will likely have a stop loss level based on some of your uh, trend analysis, some of your pivot points. Um, I think, it also varies greatly based on the on the company and the stock. If you're in a volatile small cap company that is is fluctuating between twenty and thirty percent on a daily basis, then it doesn't make sense to have a tight stop loss because you will st be stopped out every 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 day basically. However, if you're in a in a large company like Novo Nordisk, for instance, then it may make sense to have a stop loss of five percent because those kind of stocks doesn't really fluctuate that much on a daily basis. So again. Having a mental stop loss in mind will greatly again uh, decrease the impact of those emotions because okay, there is a possibility that you will be frustrated about it going up after you have sold your shares at, at let's say uh, minus 15% uh, return. However, if it goes down 50% after you, you sold out, you will be happy about it. So again, following your strategy will never make you able to say, oh, God, I should have sold or, oh God, I should have never sold because you're just following your strategy. And I think it eliminates so many aspects of emotion in your perspective on trading. The last element in my sort of five step uh, strategy is basically being able, when I'm doing the investment, being able to assess what will change my perspective on this investment so basically whenever I'm doing due diligence I have some uh, I have my DG engine I have several aspects and elements that I'm analyzing and company based on management evaluation uh, market growth so and so forth so there are a lot of aspects and elements that I'm looking at there however I think when you whenever you're doing an investment you need to sort of have in mind what will change my perspective on this? Is it basically the CEO that is resigning? Martin Cronin from Patriot One Technology is resigning. Um, how is that changing the case? Um, okay, uh, we have Amazon entering the RX uh, medical healthcare space in, in the US. How is that changing the case for uh, Go Health? Or um, there, there are loads of these elements that can change quite quickly from one day to another and you need to be aware of these fundamentals changing um, and, and sort of assess how is this changing my perspective on this specific company and this specific investment and I think um, it may also be that a, that a stock is simply up 100% and I think back to number three and the price target 
and and I'm 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 totally fine with you changing your price tag. What I'm saying is that if if you're investing at eight or six dollars per share and it goes to twelve, which is your price target, you should you should never just uh, sort of increase your price target and not sell a single share. That is just stupidity, and it will sort of you you will be punished for it at some point. So what I'm saying is that okay, let's just summarize here. First of all, strategy is the way of eliminating avoid uh, eliminating emotions in your investment career. Sort of, and and then when you have a strategy, from my perspective, there are five steps that you need to follow. First of all, you need to determine what is the type of investment I'm doing here. So, what is the purpose with this, and and what type of investment is it really? Is it a, a day trade? Is it a swing trade? Is it a long term hold? Second is the time horizon. How long is uh, is my perspective on this specific investment, and how long? Am I expected to be in this stock for? Third is the price target. So what is your goal? What is your price target with this investment? Is it a 100% increase? Is it a 50% increase? Or is it only a 10% increase? It varies greatly from person to person. Four is stop loss. And when I'm talking about stop loss, I'm not talking about a physical stop loss. I'm talking about a mental stop loss. So what is my sort of pain point here? What is the level where I'm not going to take more risk and and potentially become what we are calling a backholder in the investment world? So it's a good way of, of you being able to cut your losses rather quickly, and it also makes you able to actually be able to be rational about stocks that you don't fall in love with. A good example is, is Patriot One Technologies. I was in love with with that company for a while, and, and I sort of ended up selling quite a big of my position with with a major loss. But if I were, if I had a strategy initially and had sold uh, when it reached my sort of stop loss level, mental stop loss level, I would have never ended up in a position where I had to take a huge loss on that investment. The fifth and last element uh, of my five uh, step strategy here is to basically as assess the elements or parameters in a case based on my investment rational that is changing my perspective on the company. Is it that the market growth is significantly decreasing? Is it a change in management? Is it insider selling? Some of these elements in a company based on your initial analysis, and that may be technical, it may be fundamental, but you need to be able to uh, have a bit of a proactivity and foresight into what are the potential elements that are changing and how will that uh, affect my perspective on that investment. So that was my guide, my five-step guide to how you're avoiding emotions. I hope you will uh, benefit from these steps and elements and be able to apply them to your own investing. And uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, as well as go to my Twitter page uh, that is at Gunt Philip, and then please give me a follow there. And uh, then until next time, see you guys.